Hello, this is Armano and uh, I got a new tutorial for you guys. Um, let me, I'm gonna let you listen to what I got here. Okay. Anyways, it's nothing special. Um, uh, the the whole purpose of the tutorial is to basically show you something that I, that I kind of figured out, I learned um, not too long ago, which is basically how to side chain um, the dry, uh, sorry, the the wet signal of an instrument, um, side chain it from the the dry signal. Um, for those of you that are experts in Cubase. Feel free to correct me <laughs> uh, if you see anything that uh, I did wrong. Um, I did make an editorial last year, and I did make a mistake. Um, not not a, a insane mistake, but it was something that I could have um, said better. But um, so feel free to put in your comments. Um, you know, if if you see something that I you know, could help me understand better Cubase, great, because Cubase is awesome, uh, DAW, I love it, it's just very complex, and I kind of like that, actually, that I learn new things every day, so anyways, um, <clears throat> so the way I got this, um, what I have set up here uh, is this, the instrument here, which is Group Agent SE, right here, and I pulled um, I, I just got a, a bass tab um, that I put in one of the uh, uh, pads here. Um, and um, I can show you maybe in another tutorial how to make it so that it plays all the notes uh, that you want. Um, but anyways, so I was kind of messing with it and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, make a tutorial about this thing that I learned. So it's a very simple kind of baseline and <clears throat> if you just listen to the um, the actual signal well what I did here is I actually put it stereo I did no bus so I'm just gonna mute everything else all right and now you can hear just okay so this is the dry signal. Now, normally what I would do before is I would just go ahead, open up the um, inserts, and then I would just put a reverb or whatever effect I wanted to do. And the problem with that is that it's kind of limiting because there's only so much, um, if you uh, want to do something cool to the effect, um, like reverb or you want to do like some EQ or something else, um, it would affect uh, everything. It wouldn't just affect um, just the reverb because you're applying the reverb on the actual channel. So now there's different ways of doing this. Um, the way I, I figured to do it is to create um, two group channels. Um, you can also create effects in effects channel uh, honestly, and this is where the experts can correct me, it seems to me that the difference between an FX channel and a group channel, it's almost like a technicality because they look exactly the same. Um, so, I mean, I don't see any difference because I actually, before the tutorial, I thought, okay, I want to see if I can do the same thing. It looks like we can do the exact same thing with the FX channel, but... Um, Let's just focus on what I what I did, which is basically created two group channels. Uh, one I called it synth dry, and then I'm gonna call this synth wet. So what the point of this doing this is that what this channel will do, this will be like a trigger uh, channel, which will route will send the signal to this and also to this independently. So what this will do, this will only play the dry signal. This will only play the wet signal. So now you have two independent channels that you can mess with and they will not affect each other. Uh, and then what I did with this one, 
you notice I kind of messed over here with it. The reason why is because you don't want to have two dry signal of the same instrument play. So after what I meant is besides this channel sending signals to these two, you don't want it to go anywhere else. And as you know, by default, it goes to the stereo out. So you want to go here. Uh, did I get this right? Okay, and you click on no bus right there. So now um, it's only sending the signal to the dry and wet. Uh, it's actually sending it also to the effect channel. That's because I was experimenting with it. Uh, but we don't need to worry about these right now. But so this is the first two sync dry, sync wet. And then you put no bus. So this is basically essentially muted. Uh, so if you just play that one right now, you see how it's, you can't hear anything because it's going, it's going nowhere. It's going to no bus, but it's going here and here through the sense. So if you click on this, Hmm. What did I do wrong? <laughs> oh, I think. Okay. 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 All right. So that is the dry signal. And then this is now. Yeah. Because I, I put a, a reverb on this one. I'm old school. I, I like room works. I could use the other one, but with the convolution effect, whatever. But it takes too much CPU power, and I, I don't think. Uh, sorry, my ears. I don't see a difference for what I do. Um, and then I did. I put a compressor here, and so this is where it gets cool because now what I can do is I can. Uh, sidechain this reverb signal that I have here um, with the dry signal here and I, I want to since I already have that as the default trigger I would use this one as the trigger for also the uh, the sidechain so you put the compressor you set it up to whatever setting you want I put it pretty extreme so the point of doing this is basically leaving some room for the um, to have the dry signal nice and loud and have the reverb only sneak in, come in only when the dry signal it's kind of fading away. So you have a nice cool pumping effect. So if you listen to it, you can kind of hear that it's the reverb, it's not playing when the dry signal is playing. And if you actually solo it, now you can hear it. See? Yeah, that's it. Um, and then I did something else, which is basically I created a third channel, like a, three, a third group channel right here, uh, which basically I route both the dry and wet signal over here. And then I added another compressor here with another side chain. So now both of them, they're getting side chained by the kick drum. Now, this is not the way I normally set up um, the side chain, the uh, compressor for the, you know, with the kick drum. I just did it just for the sake of the video, just to kind of do it quickly. I wasn't even uh, planning on putting a kick drum here. So I quickly did some EQ. I probably for something like this pick a better kick, but um, but yeah, so this is the re end result. And if we just do no bus here and treat it just as a strictly uh, sidechain trigger, then you can hear the whole thing, kind of that pumping effect. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. That's, I can't think of anything else. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Oh, you see here the effects channel. This is because I messed with it just to see if it made any difference. And actually it doesn't. You can, uh, if you mute these, uh, the synth wet and you can just, let's see. I mute that. 
Like in here. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. So I created, I put the reverb here, compressor with the side chain. So it's, you can do the same thing with uh, creating a, a, an effect channel. Again, I don't know if it makes any difference to do that. Um, I like just creating two group channels and get, get over with it. Just do the two group channel and then send the main uh, trigger channel to both and then treat them as two different channels and so forth and and just you know like you can see here I put I did some EQ that it's only affecting the the reverb so I'm you know rolling off all the all the low frequencies you can do the same thing here uh, you can also add um, a delay here uh, with some cool effects um, and all you can also create another channel now with just a delay another group channel with just a delay and you can do some cool effects with that too and so at the end you can create some you can stack you know a few a few channels with some um, each with its own effects and then you can have it also interact with each other like a, a sidechain compressor uh, it's a little bit easier I think to do it this way so feel free to to post a comment, correct me, give me tips, suggestions, or just say thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for listening.